A very good afternoon um, to Mr. Roger Wang, um, Dr. Derek Goh, of course my uh, co-chairman, Mr. Tony Chu, uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen, uh, very good afternoon and thank you very much, uh, first of all, for giving me this privilege of joining you and for uh, making time uh, for our get-together. Um, as um, Roger mentioned just now that uh, today happens to be the 1st of uh, April, so for some people, they don't know whether to take it seriously. But um, I, I can assure you that uh, we, we, we are gathered here, uh, I think very thankfully, uh, not having to have uh, leave a, a seat between us uh, and in a relaxed atmosphere. But for a serious purpose, notwithstanding the fact that uh, it is the 1st of April. And um, I think the seriousness of the purpose is made all the more salient uh, by the presence of uh, Professor Wee um, and his book, uh, Since the Art of War. And, um, and I think if we were to do the same event, let's say same time last year, uh, perhaps we might feel uh, that it is not wrong. In principle and in theory, we can understand, but maybe it may feel a bit distant. Uh, why? Because if you were to consider that uh, it's been 80 years since Second World War ended. And the last time uh, Singapore actually faced a serious racial riot was in the 60s, 1960s. Now it's already 2022. And thankfully, so far, with the support of everybody and the good work of our security agencies, we have been able to prevent a direct attack by terrorists on our soil. So maybe to some, they may think that uh, our environment is secure, secure for people to live here, to study here, to play here, to bring up families here, to do business here. So if it is so, then let's all just carry on with life, whatever else is happening we are quite okay down here. And in fact, all these terrible things may be quite some time back, not something that we need necessarily to worry about. And I would say that if we were to uh, do this very same event, same day last year, assuming we could meet, then I would not in any way uh, find it hard to understand if in the quietness of our hearts, we might be thinking some of those thoughts. But I think um, events over the last two years and then events over the last one month uh, has changed the colour of the backdrop. The two-year one that, that I'm talking about is obviously COVID. And uh, that is why today is so special. So that when you lift the dam, you open the borders, you see the water rush, correct? It's because it's been so long. There's a lot of pent-up uh, need uh, to, 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 to go back to what you want to enjoy, what you deem to be normal. And because of this, we now appreciate how, how sudden things can change. In January 2020, life was normal. Nobody would have an inkling that maybe something that is troubling one market or something in one city in China might actually quickly develop into something that enveloped the whole world, us included. And then when it happened, when we got hit in February 2020, frankly, I don't think anybody thought that it would last until now. And even now, we are still wearing masks in an indoor context because the thing is still mutating. So what it tells us is what we can say has been quite standard for 80 years, for 60 years, hasn't yet happened, doesn't mean it cannot happen. And when it happens, it can fundamentally change our lives and our basic security. And all that means for us now and for ourselves and our children, our businesses into the future. The one that happened one month ago 
that one I think obviously everybody knows also and that geographically it might be thousands of miles away in Ukraine but the implication of that that a big country can decide that I for whatever reason um, can invade a smaller one is not something that can only happen in that far away place it is an idea and if that kind of an idea were to be allowed to take root and with the small country has no means and no will to want to defend itself and to prepare itself for the day that hopefully will never come but if it should come that you are able to do something about it then we are going to be living in a very dangerous place and the things that we see that hasn't happened for decades you cannot say cannot happen so although today is the 1st of April again I say uh, I think it is a good day for us no less a day than 15th of February when we commemorate Total Defence Day which commemorated the fall of Singapore to the Japanese during the Second World War that we must once again remember that what you think won't happen if it should happen you have no time to react actually you don't even have time to regret and you'll be too late so let's plan ahead be ready so that it doesn't come to that and for that to happen for Singapore then I come to the immediate the direct message today which is that of the defense of Singapore uh, one thing that Singapore doesn't have is size whether you talk about land you talk about airspace you talk about population compared to many other places uh, we are small but how are you going to defend a place when you are faced with these kinds of realities then you have got to make the best of what you have and what it means is that we really have to depend on all of us coming together that is why you find that our military comprise a core not a big one and essentially we rely for our fighting strength on generations of national servicemen and this is something that we have built up over the decades it is not something that you can just make happen by passing a law because if your people do not want to support it they don't see the point of it if your society whether your community or your economy doesn't see the point of it then it's not effective and cannot be sustained so the fact that we are celebrating 55 years of national service in Singapore this year goes far beyond the fact that we have an enlistment act it is because generations of Singaporeans and all who work live in work and live here understand that it is in our common interest that we protect this place together because without that basic ability to ensure our security you cannot bring up families properly you certainly cannot run your business with proper planning or a sense of actually what's going to happen to it and the value of this as I have said just now I think has become very very clear by recent over developments in order to encourage this on an ongoing basis so over the years uh, we have um, introduced awards the NS mark the NS mark goal the total defense awards in order to recognize individuals organizations uh, who have stepped forward gone the extra mile to contribute to this process and from MINDEF and the SAF we sincerely appreciate all the efforts and all the support that has been rendered uh, through uh, the recognition of these awards and, and even beyond that uh, to keep the national service uh, relevant and to keep it strong so today uh, I'm happy to be here um, to uh, recognize the, uh, the contributions of the uh, Marketing Institute of Singapore uh, and to uh, award the mark 
and at the same time, uh, as I learned just now, that this is also your 50th year next year. So um, happy anniversary in, in uh, advance. And obviously, um, heartiest congratulations also to the five recipients of your um, Bond Free Award. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think I think I think the, 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 the emphasis should be on the word uh, award. Okay, <laughs> lifelong learning. Huh? Okay. So so it's, I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity to say that uh, uh, let's work together in partnership. Uh, important takeaway is that uh, we are as strong as we are together, and everybody, every organization in every part of this society and economy can and must make a contribution, and it is for our mutual good. Um, and um, we uh, would have to, on a MINDEF part, continue and try our level best to create value uh, when people serve with us, full-time national service, when people come back to serve with us during the reservist, how they can bring their expertise in the professional careers uh, to bear in military capacity, how we can continue to invest in their upgrading so that uh, for at least some industries, they'll find that whatever uh, they learned in the military can actually be applied um, to their industries and to their professional careers as well. So by minimizing uh, opportunity cost and maximizing value, uh, we will do our very best um, to create that difference uh, and to also recognize and acknowledge everybody's uh, contribution. So once again, I thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity to join you. Uh, and once again, congratulations to our winners. Thank you.